This video is an overview of hypothesis testing. In hypothesis testing, we have two hypotheses, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Generally, the null hypothesis is nothing has changed, and it can be denoted as H0, or, uh, which is read out loud as H0. Um, some examples of the null hypothesis would be the mean has not changed over time. So if there was a previously accepted population mean, that population mean is still holds today. Or the mean for a particular group is the same as the mean for the general population. Or two groups have the same mean. The alternative hypothesis is the hypothesis that we're testing, and it's typically denoted either by HA for alternative or H1. Um, examples of the alternative hypothesis would be the mean has changed over time or that the mean for a specific group is different from the mean of a general population, or that two groups have different means. In hypothesis testing, we assume that the null hypothesis is true and do an experiment or observation and consider the likelihood of this observed outcome assuming that the null hypothesis is true, or pretending that the null hypothesis is true. So we collect or observe data and find the test statistic, uh, the value with the observed sample. So here it could be x bar, the sample mean, would be our test statistic. Um, so we look at 100 individuals and say, what was the amount of time it took you to graduate from college? And x bar, the average amount for that sample, is the test statistic. We then find the probability of observing a result at least as extreme as the test statistic, assuming the null hypothesis was true. So the p-value is the probability of observing a result at least this extreme, assuming the null hypothesis is true. So say the null hypothesis is that um, the average college graduation time is five years. If our test statistic, our sample mean, is 5.5 years, how likely is a result of 5.5 years or more, um, given that the true population mean is five years? If the p-value, the probability of a result at least this extreme, is small, we reject the null hypothesis. This means there's enough evidence to say that the null hypothesis is false. And that is, there's evidence suggesting the alternative hypothesis is true, that uh, the true average graduation time is more than five years. Um, if the p-value is not small, if the probability of having a sample of this size with an average graduation time of 5.5 years or more, even though the general population mean is five years, if that, if that probability is not very small, we do not reject the null hypothesis. So this means there's enough evidence to say, sorry, there is not, there is not enough evidence to say that the null hypothesis is false. So how do we define small? Um, that is defined as the level of significance for the test, alpha. So alpha, this is a Greek letter alpha, is the cutoff point for how small the p-value needs to be to reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. So p-value less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is greater than alpha, we do not reject the null hypothesis. 0.05 is a most common level of significance, um, but alpha equals 0.01 and alpha equals 0.1 are also used. The critical region, or rejection region, are the values of the test statistic that would cause us to reject the null hypothesis. Um, so extreme values that would cause us to reject the null hypothesis. A test is a two-tailed test if the critical region is in the two extreme regions, the tails under the curve. So if an extreme value on this side or this side would cause us to reject the null hypothesis, then this is called a two-tailed test. And so for example, we could have a null hypothesis that the mean is equal to 10. In that case, the alternative hypothesis for this two-tailed test would be the mean is not equal to 10. Um, it could be different from 10 in either direction. 
And a test is a one-tailed test if the critical region is in just one tail, so just the right tail or just the left tail. In this case, the null hypothesis would be uh, that the mean is less than or equal to 10, and the alternative hypothesis would be that the mean is greater than or equal to, sorry, strictly greater than 10. Um, or if we're talking about a left-tailed test, that the H naught, the null hypothesis is the mean is greater than or equal to 10, HA, the alternative hypothesis, uh, the results that would cause us to reject the null hypothesis are that the mean is strictly less than 10. Um, one note here, um, some journals and books and so on um, use these as complementary. So if the null hypothesis, if the alternative hypothesis is mu greater than 10, then the null would be mu less than or equal to 10, the mean less than or equal to 10. Um, others always use mu equal, e use equality, regardless of whether they're talking about a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test. So a two-tailed test will always have something equals something. The mean is 10 or the proportion is 0.5 or so on. Um, but a one-tailed test could be expressed as um, the mean is less than or equal to 10 or the mean is, strict, is just equal to 10. Um, the alternative hypothesis is the same either way, mu greater than 10. Um, uh, so it's basically just a notation. Are we assuming that the mean is something in particular, or are we assuming the mean is less than or equal to something? Um, in terms of this course, either way is absolutely fine with me. Um, in practice, you'll see it both ways. I believe that this is becoming more common, however. Okay, so um, we'll do some more examples in future videos, but as some you know, sort of partial examples, um, we could say um, we want to test whether the average time it takes college students to graduate is five years at an alpha equals 0.05 level of significance. In that case, the null hypothesis is that it takes students five years to graduate, mu on average, the population mean mu is five. The alternative hypothesis then would be that mu, the population mean, is not equal to five years. So this would be a two-tailed test because it doesn't specify which direction we're talking about. It could be different from five, either being less than five or greater than five. No direction is specified, and that makes it a two-tailed test. Or, um, and in that case, uh, because we have an alpha equals 0.05 level of significance, the total area in those two tails is 0.05. So the area in each tail in the rejection region or the critical region is alpha over 2, 0.5 over 2 is 0 0.025. That would be the area in each of those two tails. And if the sample mean is in either of these two, two tails, if the probability of a result at least this extreme on either side is less than 0.05, we would reject the null hypothesis. So. Um, what about a one-tailed test? If we want to test whether college students take less than five years to graduate from college on average, um, and an alpha equals 0.05 level of significance, then the hypothesis we're testing, HA, is mu less than five, and the null hypothesis could either be expressed as the complement of that, mu greater than or equal to five, or simply as mu is, mu is equal to five, the mean is equal to five years for graduation rates, uh, time it takes to graduation for students. Um, now here the direction is specified and that's what makes this a one-tailed test. So because the direction is specified, do college students take less than five years to graduate from college? Um, the, this is a one-tailed test and the, the critical region is just in one tail, the area, that, the part of under the curve that would lead us to reject the null hypothesis. We're just looking for a result at least this extreme. If somehow we got a result way over here, given the way this test is phrased, we would uh, not reject the null hypothesis. We would only reject it if it ended up down in this region. You know, uh, Our sample ends up being 4.4 years or something like that for a sample mean. One thing to note here is that the equal sign will always go with the null hypothesis. So whether it's 
mu equals something, or proportion equals something, or greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, um, the equal sign will always be in the null hypothesis. And uh, the alternative hypothesis could be in the form of not equal to, or strictly less than, or strictly greater than. 